Ideally, a sword should act as an extension of the arm. However, if the sword is too long, the moment of inertia is increased and thus the fence's movement is impaired. Generally, a sword that's 90 centimeters long is considered most suitable. From the straight lunge, disengagement, change of engagement and whip over, to the press, coulee, counterbeat and counterattack, and the thrown thrust, cut, forehand cut, backhand cut, swordsmanship has developed a great deal in the course of several centuries. However, whatever the style or technique, the objective remains the same to strike one's opponent without being struck oneself. In attack, the sword should accelerate along the shortest route towards the target. In defense, a parry with the sword or glove can change the course of the opponent's sword, or the fencer can simply retreat from the attack radius. The tip of the sword moves in a straight line, along an arc, or in a spiral movement. The blades of the swords, in constantly joining, crossing, and parting, form different kinds of levers. It's almost impossible to carry out an attack that's both fast and accurate. All in all, fences need a subtle sense of timing, distance, and space, combined with a delicate sword sense. Because of this, height and strength are not necessarily an advantage for a fencer.